Hey, what's up everybody? Nitreg here from nitreg.com and today is day 8 of the 31 day poker challenge. Today we're going to talk all about how to hand read. Um, a lot of people don't know how to hand read properly. Some people think it has something to do with you know, some sick read that you can see from someone like the, the classic case on rounders, you know, where the guy's twisting the Oreo next to his ear. Um, reads aren't something like that and they're also not something where you can just put someone on an exact hand, uh, at least most of the time. Uh, you have to think about reading hands as reading hand ranges, and that's literally just taking um, the, the whole group of hands that your opponent could have logically, and then narrowing it down street by street. And the classic kind of metaphor for this is just the picture of a funnel. Think about preflop, they're going to have all these hands way up here, and then every single street they're kind of defining their hand more and more and more until you get to the end and you have it pretty narrowed down to a very specific type of hand. Um, so I want you guys to think about it in terms of funnels, and we'll go ahead and um, kind of just do an example. Um, let's bring up a hand real quick. Cool. Um, so yeah, this is a hand that I played the other night. Uh, Swift DNL full ring, nothing spe spectacular. Uh, the villain in this hand is a pretty good reg. I think he or she is winning a lot. Well, it says that they're about break even over. 50,000 hands, or I'm sorry, 20,000 hands, but um, I don't know, this person seems pretty good to me. So, uh, and Hathaway goes ahead and raises, and there's one call by a nittier player, and I decide to call king-queen. So, let's try to think about ranges, and this is going to be kind of tedious, but this is kind of what you have to do in your head, and you don't have to be you know, precise in your head, but just kind of know where this is coming from and when you're off the tables and not playing, uh, go ahead and write all this stuff out and it'll really help you out um, when you go back onto the table. Uh, just basically, don't be lazy. Just uh, do do your homework and you'll be able to do this a lot better. So, uh, let's check out Anne Hathaway here. Uh, raising a middle position, preflop raise in middle position is 12%. I'm going to say that a pretty standard reg range here is going to be like all pairs, a lot of broadways, maybe some suited middle cards like 9-10, 8-9 suited. Uh, I got some a, a knit to this person's left and some loose passive sort of reg on their left as well. So I don't think their their hand range is going to be too wide, but they're on the hijack. So let's go ahead and give this person a range. I'm going to say they have deuce, deuce through ace, ace. I'm going to say they have um, Broadways. I could write out every single Broadway hand, but that will just waste our time. Um, so I think this will be good. Uh, Preflop ranges are going to be really wide too, so if you list all of them out, it's going to take forever. Um, they could also have something like, I don't know, 7 8 suited through 9 10 suited. Of course, the higher suited cards are covered in Broadways. Um, and possibly have something like Ace 9 suited. And I don't know. There, there might be a couple other hands, but for now, I'm just going to say this is their hand range. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look back at our hand and see what happens. So the flop comes out king nine eight rainbow. So pretty dry flop. The knit goes ahead and checks, and then I check, and he goes ahead and bets a little under, a little over half pot, and he see bets sixty six percent. So what type of hands can he have here? Um, given his preflop range, let me go ahead and move this off to the side. So let's see, it's a king nine eight rainbow board. I can s I'm gonna say that he's gonna have um, all sorts of hands. So let's go through uh, deuce deuce through ace ace. What sort of hands will he have? I think. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and label the type of hands. I'm gonna go ahead and label uh, the the really strong hands as red. The really um, marginal hands is blue, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, raise the really uh, really bad hands like bluffs and stuff as, as green. So go ahead and start out labeling the really strong hands that he could have. I think for sure he could definitely have ace king, king queen, um, king jack, king ten, or actually, let me leave those out. Ace king, nine nine, eight eight, 
eight nine. I'm gonna put down king nine suited. It sometimes he'll have king nine suited in his range, not too often. And let's also put an ace ace. Oh, and king king of course. Go ahead and put king king over here. I mean, it's po possible. Um, there's one combination of it, but it is possible. So this is gonna be the nutted range that he has. And let's go ahead and do a bluish color. Oh, it's a little close to black. Let's go ahead and make it a little bluer. Okay, that looks fine. Okay, so on this board he could have king queen, king jack, king ten. Uh, he can also have ace nine. Maybe sometimes he'll have uh, king nine, queen nine suited, or something like that. Um, maybe like ace eight suited every now and again. So those are kind of his marginal hands, and then we can go ahead and put in some of his bluffs now. And some of his bluffs might include, of course, Jack Ten. Uh, he could have Jack Queen. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Jack Queen. He could have six seven suited every now and again. Um, might have ten queen. Or, let's put queen ten. Doesn't really matter, matter the order. And can also have just pure bluffs as well, like anything that didn't hit. So let's start out with pocket pairs, deuces through sevens. Could also have um let's see. I guess let's just go ahead and put ace ten through ace queen. Uh, I could also have maybe um yeah, I mean, I guess for error that's about it. Um any any other high two high cards would be a gut shot or something which we already included in our in the middle of his hand range. So this is kind of going to be a hand range for him. Maybe there's a couple more hands in there. Maybe there's a couple less hands from that range that I give him too much credit for having. But more or less, it's going to look something like this. This is the very top of the funnel. And uh, th this is what you should have in your head, more or less. You should say, okay, logically, this is the type of hand range he might be c-betting. Um, now, let's say that we notice that he doesn't really bet um, a 9 or an 8 here, or pocket jacks or something then we can go ahead and take that out of his range. And actually, speaking of that, he probably is going to see bet tens, jacks, and queens every now and again as well. Let's go ahead and add that. Tens through queens. I mean, it's possible. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and check out what happens. Uh, this guy folds, and we call. And the turn comes a nine. And the nine is a pretty bad card for him because the board pairs doesn't really change much. It does bring back a backdoor hard draw, um, but nothing much. I would only expect him to really start betting here if he picks up a hard draw, if he has a 9 or he has a king. So I check, and he actually goes ahead and bets about two-thirds pot. So let's kind of change his range up now. So in terms of his nutted hand range on this turn, let's have this be back in red. So here for some of his nutted range that he's going to be betting, he's going to have king king, 9-9, nine, 8-8, nine, eight, 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 um, now, now all of a sudden he's going to have, um, I'll put aces in there too, now all of a sudden he's going to have uh, any 9x, actually I forgot to include some 9x here, um, he could definitely have, uh, let's see, like 9 ten of spades or something, so let's go ahead and put that there. Every now and, now and again he might have that. 910 suited. I don't know why I said spades. Okay, so now on the turn he's gonna have um oh you could definitely have King Nine. King Nine suited most likely. 
he could have ace nine suited. He could have nine ten suited. And let's say for his marginal hands, like hands that are definitely good to bet, but not like the nuts by any means, he could still have ace king, king queen, king jack, king ten, and seems about it. I don't think he would bet like tens through queens. And let's go ahead and show what type of error he might have as well. So here he sometimes may bet um, jack ten. Um, he might have uh, ten queen every now and again. That might bet here. Uh, he might have something like ace, ace ten th of hearts through ace queen of hearts. Could also have um, maybe like queen jack every now and again. Um, I don't know how often that'd be. Let's just say queen jack of hearts. And I don't know. He might. He's probably gonna give up with like under pairs. I mean, it, it's hard to know because we don't have any uh, reads on what he does with certain types of hands. So we're kind of just going blind and just assuming that this is what his range is gonna be. Um, so as you can see, we're beating a decent amount. We're beating all of these hands, uh, but we're we are losing to all these hands. Now when we write it out, it lists that there's a lot of hands over here. But um, if you do the combinatorics, which we'll cover in our math discussion in a couple days, um, we'll see that there's actually a decent amount on this this side of the coin that we're, that we're beating or tying with. So as you can see, the hand range kind of narrowed a bit. And let's go here on the river. And the river, oh, we called that turn, by the way. And then the river comes to six of hearts. And he goes ahead and bombs it pretty huge. So what do I think he has on the river? I think he's going to have typical, um, oh, let's make it red, king king, nine nine, eight eight, eight nine, uh, king nine suited, ace nine suited, ten nine suited, and we can go ahead and put, uh, Let's see, 10, jack 10, hearts, oops, uh, queen 10, hearts, um, ace 10, hearts, jack queen, or let's put queen jack, hearts, uh, ace jack hearts and ace queen hearts okay and then uh, kind of the middle of his range hands that might bet for thin value I don't know how thinly this guy value bets he could have ace 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 king I mean ace ace seems like a pretty standard value bet to me but some people might check it back ace king king queen king jack I don't know if king ten bets here that's really thin and for bluffs, he's going to have Jack Ten offsuit. Well, not not necessarily offsuit, but Jack Ten that isn't both hearts. That that obviously didn't have a flush come in. So Jack Ten with no hearts. Um, maybe like Queen Ten, and you know, again, he might not bet these all the time. We we don't know. Um, and then maybe like queen jack and then every now and again he might bet some other random hand as well like triple barrel pocket sixes or maybe not sixes but maybe like pocket fives or something so who knows um, so as you can see his range kinda narrowed it, it did shift a little bit as you can see it kinda got off to one side like everything shifted over to the nuts um, there was a little bit of like um, just one pair that he had and then the rest was just air whereas the turn he had all sorts of hands like his ace ten of hearts, his jack hearts, you know, just draws which 
were pretty much air at that time. They didn't have anything. Um, he had a lot of weaker hands that he was betting for value that we could beat. And he had some a, a few hands that we had uh, we were crushed against, or that were crushing us, I should say. Uh, so this kind of narrowed a bit. I, I guess it gets a little bit wider here, but um, technically his, his range went... Uh, it, it just kind of narrowed. Like, all these hands that I'm listing down here were all present in this hand range because that's where the range came from, and all the hand range from the turn were all present in the flop hand range, and then all of the hands from the flop hand range were present in the pre-flop hand range. That's kind of what we do is uh, if you expand all this out, it just kind of funnels downwards and downwards and downwards. Um, just the type the the thing we have to think about is not only their their hands getting narrower and narrower but we also have to think about how those hands relate to the board um, so for instance in this example there weren't that many nutted hands on the flop but by the time we got to the river there were a ton of nutted hands he could have like really strong hands like uh, trips or full houses or flushes and stuff like that so I think it's important to notice how his hand range gets narrow but then it also shifts um, between having lots of weak hands to having lots of strong hands. Um, so he goes ahead and bets the river and I end up folding. So I, I think I played right here. Um, now if we, let's say hypothetically we call and we see he has pocket fives or something. So if we know that he's capable of just pure triple barrel bluffing on this sort of board, we can actually go ahead and add a lot more green type hands on the right. Um, and that will make our river decision a little tougher next time. But I think for the most part, well, we don't really know what he has, but for the most part, we can assume that regs, aren't, like good regs, aren't going to be barreling this sort of thing down with just pure air. It just doesn't really make that much sense. Some people do, though, so you got to kind of adjust their range based on that. So um, that's it. Just remember funnels, guys. And uh, this is kind of the start of how to hand read. Um, you have to have a lot of experience to kind of figure out what type of hands people will bet with and you have to have a lot of good logic skills and say well you know this guy's a fish so he's gonna be barreling this range just because you know he thinks this this and this but this guy's a reg so when he bets his range is only gonna be this because he's thinking you know this this and this um, because for instance a fish might have like king five here and be barreling it the whole way because they have top pair whereas a reg might not bet king ten on this river because he knows that it's really hard to get called by worse. So you have to kind of like think about these things and that kind of changes their range. Um, so just think about that and a lot of experience and just putting a lot of hands and analyzing and taking notes on what people end up having um, will get you a lot better at this sort of thing. Um, and in a few days you guys will learn about how to do combinatorics and just basic poker math. and you guys will kind of see how this all fits together with that. You can see how even though there's a lot of reds listed out here, um, there's actually a lot less than you think because hands like nines, there's only one there's only one combination of that, whereas a hand like 10 jack, there'll be 16 combinations. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a few days, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks guys for watching. This is Nitrug from Nitrug.com, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.